Hello friends, my name is AJ. Welcome to the fifth 2020 AP Computer Science exam practice video. Today we're going to be going over another released FRQ from the College Board to help you practice to do well on the AP exam. Uh, today we're going to be going over number one from the 2017 released free response question, which is an array list slash arrays type of question. Remember on the AP exam, you will have two types of questions, one which will be on an array or array list, and then the second question will be methods and control structures. So today we're going to be going over a question very similar to something that you may see on question number one on the actual 2020 exam. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, so this is question number one from the 2017 released FRQ. Now, I will be posting this document, uh, or the link to this document, in the comment section down below in a pinned comment. So I definitely recommend trying to read the question, trying to try to solve it, and if you want to add a timer, I recommend doing a 25 minute timer for this question. Because again, on the FRQ sec, on the, F, on the specific question, that will be the array and array list question, your test will generally be 25 questions for question one, or 25 minutes for question one, sorry, and then 15 minutes for question two. All of the uh, structure for the actual exam is in another video that I have, which I may also post in the comment section down below. It is the tw uh, everything you need to know video for the 2020 computer science exam. So if you haven't already seen it, definitely check it out. And I talk a little bit about the structure of the test. Anyway, let's get into the question. So it says, this question involves identifying and processing the digits of a non-negative integer. So that's one thing that we already know. It's going to be non-negative, meaning that it's going to be positive pretty much, and it's an integer, so there will be no decimal places. The declaration of the digits class is shown below. You will write the constructor and one method for the digits class. So let's take a look at the actual class. So the first thing here is you can see that we have one, met we have one field uh, that is called digit list. And it is of the data type of an array list that stores integer objects. Now remember, array lists only can store reference data types, which is why here you see inside of the uh, little arrow braces or um, straight brackets, uh, depending on what you call them, greater than, less than signs also, which is technically correct, you know? Um, the thing that goes inside of here is the type of objects that will be stored inside of the array list. And that is why it, you cannot put in here, you, ha you have to put integer with the capital I, because again, it is the reference data type, or it's the object type of the, in of the int primitive type. So it says here that the list of digits from the number used to construct this object, and then the digits appear in the list in the same order in which they appeared in the original number. All right, and we'll be going over what this means in a second. Down here, now we can look at the constructor. And again, we know it's the constructor because the name of the method is the same name as the class. So this is our constructor. So you can see here that the comment says it, con it constructs a digits object that represents the input variable num. And my input is an integer. And then again, you can see here precondition. This is just saying that the input number is non-negative. And we will be implementing this in part A of the question. Now the second method, and this is actually a method, not even the constructor, you can see that it is that it is called is strictly increasing, and this is going to return a Boolean. So it's either going to return true or it's going to return false. It says it returns true if the digits in this digits objects are strictly in increasing order and then false otherwise. Okay, that is pretty interesting. So now, Let's scroll down to part A, where we actually start to solve the problem. You can see down here it says, write the constructor for the digits class. The constructor initializes and fills digit list with the digits from the non-negative integer num. Remember, that is the integer parameter for the constructor. The elements in digit list must be integer objects representing single digits and appear in the same order as the digits in num. So again, num is the input parameter. 
Each of the following examples shows the declaration of a digits object and the contents of digit list by uh, as initialized by the constructor. So for example, here, uh, the input parameter num is set to 15,704. And you can see that the, that the constructor will initialize digit list to be an array list with elements of one, five, seven, zero, four, in that order. And then you can see if a zero is placed in here, then the value will automatically be zero. So this is something that is very, uh, very interesting. Actually, this is a very interesting problem in trying to solve it. Because what you have to do is you have to take a number, right, a long number, and then somehow split it up and define each of the values, or basically uh, split up for each of the individual digits and then place it in a list. Now, and this may seem a little bit complicated, but I'm, we're going to break it down and kind of try to figure out the logic behind how to do this. All right, so now again, it just says complete the constructor below. So I'm just gonna leave my question up on the screen so we can refer to it and we can refer to the examples if we need to while we try to solve it on the right. So again, I am using, as in my previous videos, if you haven't seen, uh, I've been using JGrasp. This is simply just an easier program uh, to kind of write Java code in. Doesn't have the fancy features of autocomplete or anything, but that is okay. So I'm going to do oh, first open and close curly braces, and I'm going to add a comment that says constructor. And this comment is basically again on this closing curly brace, and I'm adding a comment on all of my closing uh, braces simply so that I know where they match up to. It's just simply something to make it a little bit more readable. Okay, now inside of here, right, what do I wanna do? Well, the first thing that I want to do is I know that I that the main job of a constructor is to initialize fields. And here I'm using the field digit list, right? And it needs to be a list and a list needs to be placed here. But the thing is, is I cannot even set any or add values to my list without creating, you know, the empty list. If I go back up here to the actual question, you can see that the digit list is not initialized. The type of it is set, but the actual value for it is not set yet. So let's do that. And the, and the value that we want to set digit list to is simply going to be an empty array list. So I'm going to type in array list. Sorry, I'm not going to type that. I'm going to type in this dot digit list, right? To actually access the field equals the keyword new array list open and close a straight bracket, or again, the little arrow brackets. And then inside of this, I'm going to type in integer. I'm going to do open and close parentheses to call the constructor of my array list, and I'm going to do semicolon. So the, the code that I wrote here is the basic code that we have talked about in the past, how to actually initialize a new array list, how to create a blank one. You use this syntax here. You first use the new keyword, you use the array list, you do these a little caret things, you add inside in, in between them, you put the type of the array list that you want to create, you have to have open close parentheses and then a semicolon at the end. Now that we've actually initialized digit list, now we can start adding values to it. But the question is, how do I actually add values? Right, so we need to think about this from a logic point of view, because this is actually a logic math type question that we're trying to solve here, right? Let's say I have my input number. Again, I'm going to scroll back down to the question. Let's say I have this number, right? 15,000, 15,704. How do I create a, how do I take a specific digit off the end of my number and add it to my list? Right? So let's think about this. If I, if I want to take a number and make it smaller, right? I know that there are certain um, arithmetic operations that we can use, right? So, oh, sorry, I'm right here. You know that we can use the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulus operators. And I'll add some spacing in between. These are the different operators that we can use right, mathematical operators without using the ones from the math class, and that's not required for this question. 
So now looking at these, let's think about the things that can make a number smaller, right? Because if I want to make the first point, the first thing that I have to think of is, well, I want to make this number smaller. I want to get just one specific, you know, digit each time. And in order to do that, I need to make it smaller. So we can automatically remove addition and multiplication from our list because those make the numbers bigger and that does not solve the objective that we want to solve. So now let's take a look at subtraction. Let's say I have my number 15,704 and I want to get the four out of it, right? The first digit. What do I have to do? Well, I'd have to take 15,704 minus 15,700, right? And that would get my value of four, which is great. Now I have one digit, but now how do I do the second digit? which is this one. In order to get this second digit, I actually have to subtract 15,704 from it, right? I have to subtract these three values and then this over here. So 15,704 uh, 15, minus 15,704 will give me zero, which is my second digit. Now, if I want to find my third digit, what do I have to do? Well, I have to do 15,000 or 15,704 minus 15,004, and that would get seven. In fact, that would get 700 still. And then you'd have to get rid of the rest of the digits. So when I think about this, if I'm trying to do a repeated process, right, all my numbers are constantly different every time. And the, the numbers that I'm actually trying to find, there's no way to mathematically know, okay, what is the next number that I need to subtract by in order to get my digit? So definitely subtraction is too complicated. We cannot use it for this particular example efficiently. Now, if you were to somehow find a solution within 25 minutes doing subtraction, that is very good, but it's just, it's not recommended because it, it's, too, it's too complicated and it's not the best way to solve the problem. So now we're left with division and we're left with modulus. Let's look at again, 15,704. What would I have to divide this number by, right? To get, for example, each digit. Well, we know that we have, we use the decimal number system. Every single digit value is, you know, 10 to the power of something. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, my first digit represents 10 to the power of zero, one's place. My second digit represents 10 to the power of one, the tenths place the hundredths place here for 10 to the power of two, the thousands place for 10 to the power of three onward. So, you know, it would maybe reasonably assume, let, let's try 10. And, you know, we have integer division here. So let's say I do 15,000, 15,704 divided by 10. What would I get as a result? Well, if I were to do integer division, right, this would be 15,007d.4. And because it's integer division, right? The points here are going to be subtracted. If I were to do it again, let's say now I divide this by 10, right? Now this is going to give me 157.0 and the point zero is removed because it is an integer division. Now let's say I try it again and I divide this by 10 like this. Now I'm left with 15.7. Now, because that's a decimal point, right? Those, those are removed. Now, if you notice what's happening is I'm actually shrinking off my digits every time I do this. So even if I divide by 10 again, this is going to give me 1.5 and the 1.5 truncated will give me one. If I were to do this divided by 10 again, it would give me zero, right? So I, when every time I divide by 10, I'm actually sub, I'm getting rid of decimal places which is actually very good to solve this problem because once we get a decimal place, we don't want it. And we, so we have to get rid of it. But knowing this, right, I can divide to get rid of the decimal or get rid of the last um, digits. But then how do I actually, you know, get the value of the digits that I'm erasing? Well, let's look at modulus, right? Because what is the, what is the entire purpose of modulus division? Modulus division gives us the remainder, right? Gives us the remainder of normal division. 
So instead, let's say I do 15,704 modulus 10, right? Well, I'm first going to do the same division. It's going to give me 15,000, right? 70 even times with a remainder of four. Okay, so the once I do this and I divide by 10, the remainder is going to be four because 10 goes into 15,704, um, 1,570 times, right? Yes, with a remainder of four. And now if I were to do division on my number here, 15,704 divided by 10, it gets me 1,570. So now what if I do, right? So I do 15,704, now divided by 10, and with integer division, it would be, you know, uh, 1570.4, which is 1570, because again, decimals truncate off. So now what if I take this value and I do modulus on it? I can do 1570 modulus 10. Well, 10 goes into 1570 even 150 or 157 times. So knowing that the remainder, because it goes in evenly, the remainder is zero. Now I need to get rid of my last digit now that I have found it. So I can do division again. I can do uh, 1570 divided by 10. And then once I do this, right, my value is going to be 157.0. And then because this is integer division, my decimal is truncate and it is 157. Right? Now I can do 157 modulus 10, right? And 10 goes into 157 15 times. So my remainder of that is going to be 7. If I were to take 157 divided by 10, this results in 15.7. And remember, decimals truncate, so this becomes 15. If I do 15 modulus 10, this results in 5, because 10 goes into 15 once with a remainder of 5. And now lastly, if I do 15 divided by 10 again, this will get me 1.5, which, when I truncate off the decimals, is 1. If I do 1 modulus 10, well, 10 goes into 1 zero times, right? And with a remainder of 1, just like that. Now, if I were to do 1 divided by 10, that gets me 0, 0.1, which, when decimals truncate, is 0. So I, I've kind of thought about this now where I can use this repeated process of modulus division and division to get each of my decimals. Because look, the result of my modulus was, was 4, 0, 7, 5, 1. 4, 0, 7, 5, 1. It's the digits of my number, right? So if I know that, well, I can do modulus by 10 to get the decimal and then division by 10, and I can do that in a repeated process all the way down until my division is zero to get my numbers, right? That can work towards solving the problem. And then now I start to think, well, what, what, what do I use when I'm doing repeated processes? Well, repeated processes are iteration and those are loops. So I can do a loop right? And how, why, what would I make my loop? So now I know that I need to do, I need to employ iteration in order to solve this problem, right? Because there's a repeated process of modulus division and division. And, but I keep repeating this process. What is my condition that I'm going to be repeating it? Well, I'm going to be repeating it as long as my number, right? My overall number that I'm working with is less than or is equal, or is more greater than, sorry, zero. As long as that number is, is greater than zero after I divide by 10, I can repeat the process over and over and over. Because once my value of division reads zero, 
0 modulus 10, right, is 0, and 0 divided by 10 is 0, so then after that it would be a repeated process over and over again. I don't need that. So what I'm saying is I need to iterate while, keyword here, right, Kid, uh, while, we have to iterate while the main number is greater than 0, okay? And what am I repeating in my iteration? What I'm actually repeating? Well, I'm repeating the process of modulus by 10, and I'm repeating the process of division by 10. Now, why did I want to show all of this to you? Because, you know, people often, and I, th and I did get a comment on this in, in a uh, previous video, where a lot of people, you know, they're able to kind of watch other people, especially in these type of reviews, and you know, it's like, oh, you know, it makes sense. But then when they physically try it out themselves, they may get lost, simply not because they don't know the content, but because they don't necessarily know how to approach the problem. So what I wanted to do in this video was I really wanted to break down, rather than just, you know, explaining the example, I wanted to go through the, the steps of logically thinking about how we could solve the problem, right? We started with, well, what you know, what math can we use to make the number smaller? And then we got rid of, you know, subtraction. And then we noticed this common pattern, which modulus and division. And now we even created a framework by which we can solve the problem. We have to iterate, we have modulus, and we have division. So let's work to solve this problem now. I'm going to say int um, my num equals num. And the reason why we're going to do this is because I don't want to be, I don't want to be editing my parameter, right? So I'm going to store this to another integer. So now what are we going to do? Well, let's set up this iterative statement here. We can say while, while my num is greater than zero, right? And of course, because this is a while, I do need to have my parentheses around my condition. And I'll add a comment there. So we know that the curly brace here is, is attached to the while loop. So while my value is greater than zero, right, I can now find my digit. And my digit is going to be my num modulus 10. Just like that. My num it modulus 10 is my digit, right? If I take 1570 modulus 10, you can see up here, it gets me my digit right over here. So now that I have my digit, I need to add it to my array list, right? Because the entire point of this constructor is to make is to put the digits in my array list. But now I want you to think about where do I actually want to insert my new value? Because I'm getting my digits from right to left rather than from left to right. Meaning that if I, I don't want to just add my values to the end of my list because then, you know, my number, my digit list would be 40751 in this example instead of 15704, which it should be. So instead of adding it to the end of my array list, I want to add it in the beginning of my array list. So to do that, I can say this dot digit, um, okay, this dot digit list, right, dot add just like this and so remember if i want to add at a certain position instead of just at the end i have two parameters the the first parameter is the location of where i want to add my new value and then the second parameter is the actual value i want to add so i'm going to add at the first position in my array list my digit now you may be wondering especially if you know a lot about arrays and array lists that array lists take integer, right, integer objects instead of my primitive type digit. But there's actually something in Java called boxing and unboxing, which basically um, allows this, it'll automatically convert this digit primitive type into a reference type when I add it to my array list. So it actually will not, it will not um, cause an error in this case. And now the last thing I want to do is the set last part, division by 10. I want to take my num and divide it by 10. So I use divide equals here. And now that will divide my number by 10. And I'll be able to now use my new number and do modulus on it to find the next digit. So now this is perfect, right? This works 
almost perfectly, except for one scenario. And that one example is in actually example two right here. What if my input value is zero, right? Because if my input value is zero in the code that I'm running here, it's going to skip over my while loop because you know zero is not greater than zero and I never add anything to my, to my digit list. So what I want to do is I want to create a separate case right, for if my input value is zero, and that can be with this if statement. So if um, my num equals zero, just like this, then I want to do this dot digit list dot add zero, just, sorry, not nine, zero, just like that. And the reason I'm adding zero is because zero is, of course, the only digit in my number. So now that this has been completed, this is the final solution for part A. And I'm going to erase this up here just because that is our working through the problem. That is the solution for the constructor of the digits list or the digits uh, class. So this particular question, especially part A, is a little bit like, especially if you don't really know um, modulus division and division and how you can use those to get digits off of a number. In fact, your teacher in computer science may have already shown you um, this method in another example where you do like in class, you know, using modulus and then using division because it is definitely, it's a duo there that really goes and solves this very, very massive problem. It makes it pretty simple. You know, all you do is modulus to find the digit and then divide by 10, and then you just repeat. Now, the last thing I actually um, want to mention before we stop is, well, I made a spelling mistake here, let me fix that, is now we have part B to do. We finished part A, now we have part B, and part B is much, is much easier than part A, because part A, again, you had to think about it logically. Now we're just, you know, now this one will be a little bit easier. So let's go to part B, it says, Right, the digits list method is strictly increasing. The method returns true if the elements of digit list appear in strictly increasing order, otherwise it returns false. A list is considered strictly increasing if each element is greater than but not equal to the preceding element. And so then it, this table shows different calls. So you can see how seven is strictly increasing, 1356 is, but 1336 is, because remember, they cannot be greater than or equal to. It has to be only greater than, right? The next digit has to always be greater than the digit before it. And then here, 1536, and then this one is fully in descending order, so it's false. And that is pretty much the question. Now we just have to return true if it's strictly increasing and false if it's not strictly increasing. So let's do our open and close parentheses and write here um, method. All right, now let's work to solve this problem. So how do I wanna do this? Again, we have to think about how we're going to approach the problem. And if I want to compare, basically what this is saying is that I'm comparing one digit to the digit after it. And if the digit after it is greater than the original digit, then it's perfectly fine. But if the digit you're, if you have the first digit and you're comparing it to the second digit and the first digit is greater than that second digit, right? That means that it's not going or equal to, greater than or equal to, then it's not strictly increasing. So now knowing that, what we need to do is we need to loop through all of the pairs, starting from the first two and ending with the last two. And we need to compare the pairs and then if, and then if it ever breaks the strictly increasing pattern, we have to return false. Otherwise, we return true. So the best way to do this, and if we're traversing an array list as we are, we need to use a for loop. So I'm going to type for, and remember there are three parts to my for loop header. The first part is going to be initializing the counter variable. So I can say in i equals zero as my first part. For some reason I keep typing nine instead of zero, I apologize. Now we have to do the condition. And usually if we're trying to traverse an array list, we have to do i is greater than digit list, for example, dot size. And that will traverse from the first element to the last element. But I want you to think about this. Do I want to get to my last element, right? Because if I'm, if I'm trying to compare pairs, 
then really, will the last element have another number to be paired with? No, right? Let's say I have, again, a pairs like this one. If I'm here at zero in my last value, there's nothing else after it to compare it to, so there's going to be an error. Therefore, my last pair is actually these two values. So it, we're starting where we're stopping our, we should st stop traversing the array at the second to last element rather than the last element. So to do that, we simply do size minus one right here. And then the last part to this is simply how we actually, or how much we increase the counter variable each time. And that is going to be incremented by one. So we do I plus plus. I can do now open and close uh, per, uh, curly braces. I can write my comment for four. So now what do I actually want to do in here? Well, it's actually quite simple, right? The only thing I'm looking for inside my loop is that if each, if one of the pairs does not follow the strictly increasing thing, meaning that the first number is greater than or equal to the second number, like in this example here. Right. If this number is greater than or equal to, if one is greater than or equal to um, three, that means that it's not going in increasing order. So we have to return false. So all we have to do is a simple if statement. And what I'm going to do is for readability, I'm going to break this up. I'm going to create two variables to break this up into. I'm going to say int. I'm going to say um, digit list. Right dot and then how do I get a value out of my digit list I use the method get so I do get I right and sorry I needed to name this so first digit equals digit list dot get I and then the second is going to be int a second digit equals digit list dot get I plus one right because I plus one will get the second digit now, all we have to do is we just say if my first digit, my first digit is greater than or equal to my second digit, right, then I'm going to return false because it's no longer strictly increasing. Now, you may be wondering that also, remember, I'm getting an array, I'm sorry, I'm getting an integer item outside of my array list, and I'm trying to store an integer in an int primitive type, right? A reference type into a primitive type. If, if you caught on that, it was very good. But again, uh, due to um, um, this time, you know, the concept of boxing and now unboxing, it's actually, it will not give us an error, which is very, very helpful and nice. Now, the last thing we have to do is, the is to when, how to when do we actually return true meaning it succeeded well if our code if if the code is able to six to successfully go through the entire for loop meaning checking all the pairs and it did not find any situation where the increasing order was violated then we can actually return true so we return true after the rest of the for loop all right, everyone, that is the solution for part B as well. Again, this one was not as bad as part A because part A had a lot of more logic and thinking related to it. Now, another thing which uh, you may have been thinking, which I did want to mention earlier, is that, you know, we, we're about 34, 35 minutes in now. And, you know, we're only allowed really 25 minutes for question number one, or at least it's suggested that you spend 25 minutes only on question number one. And a lot of those time, like that 10 minutes was me kind of talking through it. If you were doing this on your own, obviously it'd be much, much faster because you know you don't have to listen to me talking. You, you're thinking, your brain's already working and you, and you kind of solve the problem. But um, you know, this was still really good this, in, in terms of our timing. You know, 25 minutes does not seem like a lot of time because you know, 25 minutes can go by really, really quickly. But if you do really focus and, and you spend a little bit of minutes in the beginning really understanding the question, because really the hardest part about this and, and answering the FRQs is actually thinking about the solution. Because once you think about the solution and if you have the solution in your head and you've, and you've written it out, in fact, you can even draw a little tree or diagram something to explain the solution um, in your mind and kind of work it out. But once you think of your solution, that's the hardest part because then writing the solution afterward will not take as long, right? Like if you're proficient in writing this, uh, this code, like, you know, how to write if statements, how to write while statements, really the only thing you have to worry about is the logic. So a lot of people, you know, are thinking, wow, you know, it's 25 minutes, but 
majority of the time, you're actually thinking about the solution. And then the remainder of the time, you simply just have to implement what you thought of. So it's definitely, I definitely recommend instead of jumping straight into the problem, start writing a bunch of code and kind of when, once you've gotten yourself, you know, deep into writing your code, you realize that you made a mistake or you didn't think of something and everything just falls apart and you're confused. And then you're spending, try, you're, then you're going to spend, uh, trying to spend five minutes trying to clean up, you know, your, um, your code. And, in, and by that point, you know, you may get a little bit confused, uh, the pressure of the timer that's going to apparently be on your screen in front of you, um, counting down the seconds is going to stress you out. You're going to make mistakes. That's why I definitely recommend try to solve the problem or to think about the logic first before you actually, you know, start. And even if you spend five minutes just reading the problem, kind of understanding how to do it, it will definitely take you a long way on this exam. All right, everyone, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. More review videos will be coming very soon. Thank you for watching.